Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the Master of Profits, today with another two for one review with two newer, I say newer because one has already been released before, products from Stiberitz, or Stiberitz, yeah, I think that's how you say, over in Sweden. So, Stiberitz has a lot of fame going on, or had, and still has, for making very good IPAs. And uh, they were one of the first breweries in Gothenburg that really got the whole haze train rolling with uh, GBG Beer Week. In 2016 and that was just an amazing beer uh it was one of my all-time favorite hoppy beers at the time such a great nelson forward ipa uh those beers of that beer was done by ole anderson who is now only doing oo he was also doing oo brewing at the time but now he's focusing on his own brewery he has his own brewery now with his uh business partner olof and uh, they're doing their their thing so one of the beers that we're trying today is the steve barriott's the new, I guess, or the Steve Barry, current Steve Barrett's team's rendition of GBG. And that's the one we're going to start off with, which is the new and improved Steve Barrett's Göteborg India Pale Ale. So they call this, yeah, new and improved, Steve Barrett's new and improved GBG. So it's basically their own rendition of GBG. So it's not exactly the 2016, hello phone, it's not exactly the 2016 release. It's not even the same hops in here. So it's their own take. And then we have another beer that they just released in their new format. It's their new cans, the new uh, 300 or 33 centiliter cans, 12 on cans. That looks like this. They look like energy drink cans. Had to get this one as well. This is a collab with KCBC from the States, from New York. And this is East Coast, which is an East Coast IPA. And it's funny because it's playing with the theme. They have their West Coast, which is also kind of it's a little bit more bitter New England-esque IPA with a seagull on the label, and then they did this version, East Coast now, with the bald eagle. I really thought that was cool. Had to get it, and I love the new format as well. So this one is 7.6%, the other one is 7.5%, so I guess you could technically classify this as a double IPA if you wanted to, but um, yeah, it would be fun to try these. So as I said, we're starting off with the new and improved GBG. This one is 6.5%, it has Citra, Galaxy, and Enigma hops, so quite different hop bill. Uh, compared to the original GBG with, I know Citra was probably also one of them and also Nelson. I believe it was an adapted version actually of Naranji, uh, which is one of the OO beers. But this will be fun to try. It's definitely darker, pours out in the glass, than the original um, GBG Beer Week. It's like this lightly hazy, it smells really nice though. It's this not lightly hazy golden orange color. Uh, they said something that this was also going to be a collaboration series, but I think so far they've only done one of these with Verdant. Didn't get to try that one, but it still looks very nice in the glass. And you can easily generate a nice frothy like, white head on there. Just look at that. It looks great. It's going to be my first Steve Barrett Spears since I went to the States, I think. I just had Galore and their American Pale Ale in cans just before I left. Uh, but let's check out the aroma on this one. It smells quite nice, but it's definitely quite the different aroma compared to the original GBG. It's not that crazy popping, juicy, ripe pineapple and passion fruit aroma. I'm actually getting lots of earthiness, but to me, Enigma can be quite earthy. But citrus definitely popping in there with some nice sweet citrus and juicy fruit aromas. Yeah, it's not a lot like GBG. There is definitely, I'm getting more sweet tropical fruit, like mango. Maybe a papaya. And I don't know what yeast they used originally and what yeast they use in this, actually. Uh, it reminds me a bit of S04, the dry yeast, a little bit. Uh, but it could also be something like Burlington Ale, maybe. Uh, especially when you look at the haze as well. It's not like crazy hazy and Burlington Ale is like, it flocculates a lot, that yeast. So the yeast clumps together and falls out. So it doesn't keep that kind of hazy look for, uh, through the fermentation. It, it will stay a little bit hazy, but it's not as, it's not the most like flocculent yeast, but it will clump a little bit together and drop out in terms of haze, but it looks and smells very nice still, but mm, let's try it. Cheers guys. Quite nice, quite nice, but I'm definitely not blown away by it. What a very nice IPA nonetheless. It's n not at all like the original GBG. At least this batch. The thing is, I don't know how they do their canning in terms of dates. Ooh, nice little snappy bitterness there on the end. Uh, best before 2019, 
May, 3rd of May. So I don't know if they give like six months of age or what they do, but they just got this at my local beer shop and I just wanted to check it out. I've heard a lot of mixed feelings about it. I've heard a lot of people love the first edition and then I've heard it's been swinging a bit, um, which I guess I can, I don't know. I mean this, oh, look, we got some floaties. I don't know if you can see that, but we got some yeast gunks in there, but that's probably yeast. That's flocculated and clumped together. <laughs> But it's tasty. It's just not as no way near as mind blowing as the original GBG in my mind. I still really like the beer, and I still think it's a great kind of New England IPA with a little bit of bitterness. But it's not as full on. It's more sessionable actually. It's a bit more drinkable than a lot of New England IPAs because it's not the, like this kind of crazy gushing fruit flavor. There, I'm, the flavors I'm getting though, I'm getting some classic grapefruit flavor, lots of citrus, sweet citrus, a little bit of this sweet mango and papaya but also a lot of earthiness, actually. And I think that might be from Enigma, because I have a, some, like, a lot of the Enigma beers I've had a lot of earthiness, but I know Galaxy can also provide a bit of earthiness, and Galaxy is not always this super melon-forward juicy flavor that it gives. I, can't, I think it depends on how you use it, but... The most dominant flavor in here for me is definitely Citra. There's maybe just if I... Stretch my imagination a bit, a little bit of melon character, but it's nice. It's a very nice IPA, but I still prefer the OG GBG Beer Week, and I drank so much of that beer, and it was amazing. But this is still nice. But hmm, just have a sip of water and move on to the next beer. Okay, moving on to East Coast, made in collaboration with KCBC. The only information I have on this beer is 7.6%, and it's a New England IPA. <laughs> they didn't give much info, unfortunately, on their website or anything, uh, but... That is a whole lot more turbid than the uh, the new and improved GBG. I think this has been out for at least a month, so it's not super fresh to the can, but this was it just arrived locally. I'm not sure, maybe they've also done another batch. Um, this is, it doesn't have a production date, but it's best before the, oh, the <laughs> second, I can't read that. It says 220222, oh, there we go, the 22nd of, February 19th, so maybe it's the same release, I'm not sure, but pour is much hazier in the glass. Look at that, that is full on super hazy orange color. Looks like a lot like um, like orange juice or something like that. Nice thick head. I really dig the can, the 33 centiliter can. Can is much better for this kind of beer and 33 centiliters or 12 ounces is just a bit more fitting because it's like 7%. So. I think that's very good, but very creamy head on this as well, like thick, beige looking creamy head. Let's check out the aroma. Ooh, yeah, that doesn't smell exactly like super fresh. I'm getting, like the first thing I notice when I'm getting IPAs that are not like crazy fresh is a hint of like sweet tea leafy hop aroma. And I'm definitely getting this. This reminds me of buying American IPAs over here in Denmark. Uh, years ago, where freshness wasn't as in focus as it is nowadays. But underneath, I'm getting some sweet malt, some slightly bready malt, almost like caramelly maltiness. And definitely the grapefruit and pithy citrus rind and floral notes. It's not like, at least now, this bursting tropical aroma. That is what usually they've been known for at Steve Barrett's. Um, I really like Galore though, and the, the American Pale Ale, when I had him last, but yeah, both of these are not as bursting. The, the new and improved GBG is definitely more tropical forward than this, but maybe, and it's also quite earthy, just like the other one. But let's try it, see what it is in the taste. Cheers, guys. Ooh, that tastes like you did an old school East Coast IPA hazy. <laughs> It has this uh, oniony, garlicky, earthy, bitter hop flavor, like old school hops like Chinook or, um, you know, almost like if you dry up with Columbus or something like that. It, it, it's, it's got those kind of flavors to me, uh, which really reminds me of what you got on the East Coast back in the day, paired with a huge malt backbone. This doesn't have that like huge malt backbone, but it has a touch of like sweet, bready maltiness, not the caramel really, as I talked about, but then again, it has that tea leaf hop flavor. And I'm also getting lots of grapefruit. It's pretty interesting. This is much more, to me, old school, actually, with a bit of a new school twist. Because it is juicy, but not like this 
fruit, like it's not this like tropical fruit, it's sweet fruit juice flavor. It's more towards like some, some kind of bitter citrus fruit flavor in terms of like grapefruit, grapefruit juice. Also a little bit more bitterness, but nothing crazy. It's not like one of these super bitter uh, West Coast New England hybrids, but yeah, it, it kind of to me tastes a bit like you did an old school East Coast IPA in New England. But rating wise, let's see, let's go like a 92, I'd say, for the new and improved GBG. Quite nice, but there's definitely other hazier, or not hazier, but other New England-esque IPAs I prefer more than this, but still very nice. And then for East Coast, it really is like you did old school East Coast with a bit of juiciness. I'm gonna go straight 90. I think it's still very nice, but it's not mind-blowing. It's like a foreign untap or something. Just nice IPA, but it's just not like rocking my world. But yeah, again, a little bit disappointed in these two, but hey, maybe they're not as that fresh, even though they just came in the door at the local bottle shop. But if you guys had a chance to try either the new and improved GBG from Steve Barrett's or the Steve Barrett's and KCBC collaboration, East Coast IPA, let me know what you thought of them. Which one's your favorite of the two? Do you have a new favorite from Steve Barrett's? Let me know, guys. And as always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I wanna say cheers in new and improved GBG because that's my favorite. And see you guys in another video.